Hello, West Ham Network. It's Holly and I'm here with your Hammers headlines for today, Wednesday, the 7th of August, run in association with KUMB.com. Now, today we're going to be running through upcoming fixture changes. And of course, it would be rude for us not to cover the content around our two newest signings. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Drop us a comment down below with your thoughts as well on all the latest West Ham news, because we are going to be reacting to some of your comments in upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road. So for your first Hammers headline, the fixture changes have already started because there have been two changes to dates and times of kickoffs in October. So our Spurs game now kicks off at 12.30 on Saturday the 19th of October as it's going to be broadcast on TNT Sports. And then the week after that, the game against Man United is moving back a day to Sunday the 27th of October with a 2pm kickoff. It's not actually been moved because it's being broadcast, but actually because Man United are playing in Europa League the third as they before so get those dates in the diary up second, the club have started all the PR around Guido Rodriguez and he said a few things which have definitely stood out, one of which was saying that he spoke to Alvarez before signing. So it appears that Edson has been singing our praises and the two are very much looking forward to playing together, which I'm excited for. He also spoke about how happy he is to be in East London, saying it's every player's dream to play in the Premier League and he was excited to hear that West Ham were interested in signing him. And while he brings the experience, he knows that the Premier League is a physical league and he's ready to put in the work to make sure he's up to the task. So all very positive things being said. However, with Rodrigo, Rodriguez, Rodriguez, can't speak, being 30 and Fulcrook being 31, a few have been questioning why we're going for older players and starting to use Rodriguez's announcement to address this, saying, we feel it's important to strike a balance between youth and experience across the squad and adding a player with the experience and leadership qualities of Guido will be, will be a real asset to the club moving forwards. So that kind of explains what we're going for. We're going for a very well-rounded squad and Rodriguez is a happy hammer. What more could we wish for? And just touching on that as well, the whole age side of signings, I've, I've put some real deep thought into it. And I think I've come to the conclusion that age of signings is not a problem as long as we have a plan long term because we're looking at players where I think we've been burnt as fans before at West Ham and we go this player's 30 what are we doing signing them because they haven't got many years left that's only a problem if you don't make a plan for someone in the next one two or three years to step in take their place and ease their way into being the replacement Obviously, we're scared that we're going to be left with a player for six, seven years and just hope that they miraculously perform as their legs get older and older. But I don't think this is a problem because I believe Stighton and his team will be working behind the scenes to get a good season or two out of players like Fulcrook and then be ready with the new additions into the squad to replace these players as they do get older. So I don't think we're going to be stuck with these old players for longer than they can perform at the standard that we need. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a very different way of working to what we're used to at West Ham and we do have some younger players that we're bringing in I just think we can't expect it all at once that's my opinion I might be completely different to yours but again we always want to hear what you're saying so drop us a comment with your thoughts and now for anybody that has not seen the full Krug interview on West Ham's YouTube channel, I definitely recommend it. It's worth a watch because he comes across incredible and it's actually made me really excited about him joining the team so he spoke about the way that he can get goals he was saying that Paqueta, Bowen, Caduce and Somerville can assist him and that he's the kind of player that needs assists. And he's not the player that I think he said dribbles past five players and scores, but he's confident that with the assists and with the with the service, he can do a really, really good job for West Ham. And I think it's really refreshing to hear a player speak about the way that they actually want to play at West Ham. Um, and he said that he's spoken with Lopetegui and the ways that he's going to fit into the team. So this is all the really positive makings of us actually having a style of play again. And he spoke about how he tries to be really close to the fans and also about his high work rate on and off the pitch. He said that he likes the pressure and he thrives when the fans want to see success and want to give everything on the pitch. So I think he really does understand. He spoke a lot about the shirt. It seems that he really gets how much this means to the fans, which you don't always get nowadays from Premier League players. So I feel like this is a very, very good beginning. 
And when he spoke about his strength, he went into how he can score with his left or his right foot, as well as being great in the air, which I'm sure anybody who's seen his highlights will agree with. But another part of the interview is that he said he can get into the number 10 space and then assist other players and that he loves to hold the ball up and fight for the ball. So he's excited to play in a more physical league. And he actually spoke about how Antonio holds up the ball. So he did his homework, like he knows his stuff about West Ham. But when he was speaking about how Antonio holds the ball up, he said that he also thinks he can do this and that he can play other players in. So that's amazing because if we can play him and still have that side to our game, despite not playing Antonio um, and he can score goals and he can be clinical and he can hold it up for others to run on to. I think it will make us such a more unpredictable team. It will make us a lot harder to defend against. And I think it's the makings of a really exciting style of play where any player can score and there should just be a lot of movement up top, which I think is something that a lot of us have been frustrated that we haven't seen in the last season or so. But I think for me, the biggest thing that stood out was his work ethic with him saying he wants to be the first one who shows everyone on the team that we have to work hard. And for me, that is massive. That's what I want to hear at West Ham. I want to hear someone that wants to put in the graph. Um, and it appears we might have a bit of a leader in him that will be a great one to get other players motivated. Like I said, he's done his homework. He clearly knows how we play. He knows a lot about the ways that we can play and what he can do and how he can fit in. He's confident. He seems a really nice, grounded guy. And all in all, I'd say a good egg. Great signing for West Ham. So drop us a comment. How are you feeling about the signing of Fulcrum? Because I know a lot were sceptical about his age. But following his interview, Interviews. Has it changed anyone's mind? Are we looking at things slightly differently now? Has it made anybody more hopeful? Because overall, our transfer window has been pretty incredible so far. And I'm a really big fan of his attitude. And I hope that things fall into place for him at West Ham. So there you have it. Those are your Hammers headlines for today. Check out the video as well from earlier today, where I ran through every single one of the forwards that West Ham have signed since 2010 and some of the best stories surrounding them over the years. And if you've got any more to add to it, let us know. We've got Antonio dressed as a snowman. We've got players attending races when they've tried to get their own medicals signed in France without West Ham's knowledge. We've got a lot of stuff we were chatting about. So head over to that video. Like I said, drop us a comment with the, the thoughts that remind you of the players on that list we've also got a little record of the goals that they've scored so it's very interesting and it shows that the forwards that we have now signed have a job ahead of them because they need to stop the curse and <laughs> they need to get the goals um and if you're new around here as we always say make sure you subscribe drop us a comment whether you're new or you're old around here it's not a very nice way to describe you is it being old around here whether you're a returning viewer of the West Ham network drop us a comment and let us know your thoughts on everything that's happening at West Ham because it is a busy transfer window and it's not the kind of busy in terms of us having rumours towards the end of the transfer window as we hope that something's going to happen before deadline day. We're getting business done early and we're getting decent business done. Um, and there's still time and there's still a lot of positions that we could sign people in. So it's going to be an exciting one. Not long till deadline day as well. But that's all from me. Have a brilliant day. Season begins soon. And until next time, come when you irons. <laughs>